Wouldn't it be cool if you could hear a man wearing a robe tell you a little story? Wait a minute, this is just like my my uncle. You guys want to hear a little story? Why not? Are you ready? Her hands held out in clear frustration. She could bear the sight of him no longer. Her temper was high, but as for the weight in her heart, she could not stand being away from him. It was inevitable, though. There could be no more between them both. So many months now gone. She felt them wasting away. She regretted the fact that they ever even knew each other's names. It was over. Her mind made up. One last look in his eyes and it was inevitable. There would be a retaliation. Most definitely by her own family. For they had been caught. Now the suffering would most assuredly affect the ongoing feud. No more was it possible to evacuate that empty feeling inside and replace it with an all too familiar sensation. No. She needed to wash her hands from the very idea of revenge in her heart and only look to the future that was still in motion. She shook her hand in front of him, holding the book, gesturing for him to take it. He would not. He would not even look at her in the eyes. His gaze met the ground, that same spot, in fact, where they first met all those years ago. She had to stop the thought. It was of no use now. She needed to erase it from her mind. Take it, she said with a tremble in her voice. She shuddered at the thought of him noticing it. Just take it. His eyes finally looked up from the ground and met hers. There was not anything behind them anymore that she recognized. They were filled with tears, but something cold was there. Something beyond in the back that was taking him away. What took him away, in fact. He said nothing as he reached his hand out, grabbing the book and wrapping it in a cloth to quickly tuck it into his bag. She did not want to let it go, but she had to. The ramifications were too high. As he turned to leave, which seemed too easy for him, he looked back and with his last words to her passed, I'm sorry. Those words stung at her. They pulled her from anger. She wanted to draw her knife and penetrate his soul. She wanted to carve into him just what pain she had felt now. He betrayed her thoughts just as she betrayed her family so long ago now. But he got what he wanted. His family had won. It was done. Sure, there would be a retaliation, but the war that had not quite begun was now already over. No matter what her father would think, it was futile. There was nothing more she could do. She then felt the gentle touch of Barros on her shoulder. She looked back to the quiet man, her servant, her friend for so many years. He said nothing. There was nothing that could have been said, in fact. He only guided her back to the carriage and back to where she would be safe once more until the revenge of Aldra swept towards them later on. She needed to say something. At the dinner table, her family ate away, not a care. They didn't know, not yet, but she could hold on to it no longer. She felt her father's eyes look at her in the melancholy state far too many times. The man had noticed. She never truly could hide herself from him. He was far too keen. Though now was not the time. With her brothers there slopping away, they just could not hear what she had felt. They were good brothers, but they were stupid. Far too much to be of any help to her. And her mother? She was dead already on the inside to even care. It was a sad truth, but not special for the fact of being a gold vim. Her mind wandered with what she must do. It was not easy, for her father was a powerful man. He was harsh, cold, and calculated, but not with her. He could be ruthless even towards his own sons, but not with her. She was the jewel in his eye. She knew this. No matter what, he would do anything for her. It was always that way. The thoughts that danced in the back of her head were that of protection for him. That Althus Aldra, that dastardly man. The thought swelled within a hatred that was on the brink of consuming her when a voice called out to break the flow state of rage. Cardia, my dear. Her father's words reached out and lashed at her. When her eyes met his intense gaze, she could only hold it for just a moment 
and that moment was gone. He would be able to read every thought that was writhing within her. Though in her astonishment, he said nothing of it. He knew, though, instead, his words found another subject. My dear, what news from the shale? She was originally tasked in the northern territories by his behest to secure a deal with those in Dunzudia. Cardia was to be next in line for the baronry in Vip, her father being head of state as well as landholder in the county. Though the family business took more of his thoughts than politics, they were the majority producers of Calum ore for the nation of Adrana, at least for a time longer, she feared. <clears throat> it, it went well, father. She pushed down the fears that were beginning to surface. All went well with the Baron West. It seems he will fall into the fold with these. Good. You hear that, Garen? His eyes fell upon Cardia's older brother, who was shoveling food down his throat, giggling with her then younger brother, Mikas. Some of my family care of our fortune, it seems. Garen's eyes looked up with a glaze. He heard father's words too many times. He knew the man saw him as a failure. He was fine with that, in fact. There was no care to him to be next Baron of Goldvim. That was at least what he told Cardia. No. She knew the business was in her hands when her father was to die. Just another fact she held a resentment to Althus. He would be the ruin of them all. The damnation of the East. They would be the laughing stock in circles of the high clan. She stopped the spiraling of thoughts before they swarmed her mind. It's exactly why you, my daughter, will be the Baroness when I perish. King knows my time is not long in this world, and my sons are of no use to me. He began to eat once again on such a harsh note. The food spilling from his chin, wet grease and chewed meat. Cardia flashed a weak, warm smile towards Garen and Mikas as she reached out to stroke Mikas' hand. There were many times she was the buffer between them. It was her father's high expectations. It always was. Yet as for Cardia, it grew easier through the years. Just a smile and do as he asks. That's all it took. But for her brothers, sometimes just did not happen to allow them to be submissive. That word she loathed. That word found by Garen when they were young. You're submissive to that bastard, she recalled him saying once. Too young for words such as that. Her hand left his as she continued to eat for a while. The dining hall grew quiet, save the sounds of utensils to plate ringing out. Servants floating between them to refill glasses or take away discarded plates. They were kind and gentle, almost going unnoticed, just as they should have been. That was heavily requested by her father. He could be ruthless at times. <clears throat> When they finished up their dinner, the men left to the hall as Cardia was left with her sedated mother. The woman never said or did anything, not after the stillbirth. Her mother was given CCs by the doctors in Verminen, those incantations that seemed to just take away her feelings, or even all emotion, though that was the point, being that she was of the bloodline of royalty. It most certainly was not allowed for mother to become a vessel of darkness. Not in the times that they were in. One never knew when the king would find another conduit again. It's why her father was so harsh on the boys. They needed to be the best that they could be. But in some ways, Cardia wondered if the darkness had not already claimed the family. Most especially after what she had done. It might have been the final nail in the coffin. Only time would tell, but she knew that her father would want to speak with her in private. They always spoke real business in private. But she knew he would want to the update on the Alger family. And with that she knew that it meant her mission with Althus. That terrified her. She had never failed her father before in all her years, but her first may be her last. For banishment was the only course in betrayal to her family, and she knew what that meant. The Verminen. It was a place where the discarded royals would go to be re-educated. It was a mandatory to keep the family line pure. It was a place that also held the failed monarchs. Those that had succumbed to the darkness, or even those who failed the riddle of the eye. A terrible place. It was where her mother went when she was found to be a vessel for darkness. Or at least that's what the Daox had said. Now look at her, Cardia thought. She's not even human anymore, but a mad woman lost in her own mind. Cardia wished it all were not so, 
but their part of the play was far too important to take lesser precautions. She knew it. Much rode above their heads, just as it should. They were the heads of consciousness, the outlet to the force of mankind. Or simply, that was what she was taught in the Beko College. Her mother's eyes stared off beyond the walls that were behind her. The wall that was so elegantly decorated by her so many years ago. A testament to the conquest of the war in Freyden. A college of trophies and awards won by Cardia's father and her uncle so many years ago. Her mother was a patriot for Adrana. She always was. She would tell a young Cardia of the burden of the monarchs and how they must be the mind of their people. Through conquest and triumph can the just reward of posterity come. She was quite devoted to the ways of the monarchs and how they stood in society. But over the years, it would dampen her heart, at least Cardia felt. Her mother, as she grew older, became weary. But what set off her hysteria was not the blessing of a king. Instead, it was induced by the loss of Cardia's would-be brother, the one that was said to save the golden clam. At least, that was what her mother preached. She felt as if her offspring would be the ones chosen by the king, but instead only did they disappoint. That was her father's feelings, though. It's why Cardia gave everything she had for the family. She had to. There was no other choice. That made her mistake sting even more as she thought about it. Ma'am, we need to take Madame Golvim to her wash, said one of the ladies-in-waiting who quickly appeared from the shadows of the long, low-lit hall to which they collected her and aided her down the hall for cleansing and rest. Cardia watched as they disappeared, and she quickly made for her quarters in the far end of the manor estate. She had to plan out what she was going to do, how she could keep her family name unsullied and pure, for soon only would the news hit that the clients of her father were given to the rival family. It was only a matter of time before their family fell to ruin. All the years built by the ancestors would simply be cut down then relegated to the lower epsilon of society. It was a harsh reality, but one that could not be avoided in the circles of a volume society. How could she save them? How could she make that wrong a right? It was far too late for these thoughts, but she wondered if there was something, anything that she could do. All this had been smart. He played her so well. It did not make sense. How could he have done it? That was her game. A game she played so well in the high courts of Adrana. One that she played for years. Seduction. It was easy, but how had it come to her being the one left naked in the dark? She let herself slip up. Her feelings must have taken over her. So many years of practice now gone. So many years of training to harden her mind and soften her touch. A practice that only few women carried as she did. It was the cutthroat world of the inner circle the game amongst the families that was taken to such heights, heights that no mortal could ever stand, at least not for very long. Though all this did not seem the man for such games, even for a monarch, but perhaps she finally met her match. No matter, she could not dwell any longer. Something had to be done. The cool breeze blew in from the large stained glass window. It wrapped its arms of chill around her. She quickly got up and placed a shawl around about her, pulling it over herself and sealing the front. Throwing more wood on the fire, she sat back at her desk under the single dancing candlelight. She could hear out in the distance the guards on the manor ground chattering away. She could hear the footfalls of servants walking up and down the halls. Night was falling fast. The first day was falling behind, but she might be able to make right for her family. And against the Alger family with one fell swoop, It was a difficult situation, one that called for a rather heinous approach, something she never wanted to do, but these were desperate times. A sharp tongue carries one far, she whispered the words of Kako Aratus, her father's retainer to the courts. When she was small, the noble retainer that was a Valander would teach the three of them, her and her brothers, to hold their own with the word. Though her brothers did not pay any mind to his teachings, she would always relish whenever he had the free time to speak with them. He was a good servant. Though words weren't what she needed, 
It was her body that was her tool. Perhaps she could use them both to make right her mistake. That she would do, yet it might ruin her reputation throughout all the houses as the next in line, the future baroness, though it was worth it. She would do whatever in the name of her father, no matter the outcome. It was her time to shine, she thought, as she blew out the candle and made her way to the study, no doubt where her father was alone with his thoughts. Kako, the lord's retainer, stood hovering over her father, who himself was lounging in his burgundy silken armchair, cigar in hand puffing large clouds of smoke that blended into the already hazy room. They were discussing something of import, no doubt, but Cardia could not wait a moment longer, lest her resolve would falter. We can't just let this happen, her father said as she entered. What was it, father? Cardia made her way across the vest, study to take a seat next to her frustrated father. His hands clasped together, would momentarily rub as if he was in deep thought. She studied the man intensely for a short moment before he spoke again. The man had clearly not heard her, no doubt in deep thought. She was almost tempted to just walk out of the room before he would even notice her. That was what she would do as a child. She would have waited for him to find out her mistake and come angrily into her room. Somehow, she thought that was easier, though it never really was. It was always best to announce your failures. That way measures can be taken to shift the balance, her father would say when he calmed down from his bouts of rage. He could be so very unpredictable at times. It was always hard to tell. One minute, he could be so very sweet and kind. The next minute, he would be a man filled with rage and anger. But not for too long, for the kappa would not be far away. Those mental barriers would always come when her father was raging away. Those times she would truly think in the back of her mind that perhaps her family really was cursed. Those words that were teased by an abeco. The school of monarchs. That place of growth. Children could be very mean at times. Her mind wandered far away again. She swallowed her pride hard and looked at her father. The words were difficult to pull out. They stumbled over her tongue and slipped past her lips. She was showing her fear too much already. Father, I I need to speak with you about what happened. I know you want to hear the whole story away from Mother. Her father shook his head to meet her eyes. He let out a warm smile that soothed her almost instantly. It took away the fear that was writhing within her. Yes, my dear? She let out a sigh, closing her eyes. What is wrong, my dear? Cardi was choosing her words correctly. Though at that time... Something about her father's care was almost bringing her to tears, just as they always did. I, she continued, have been struggling with something, father. Something that has been plaguing me my entire trip back home. All throughout the Dastyr realm, I, I feel, I feel I may have failed you. The words were so difficult to let out. There was a sting that carried deep within her. She felt as if she was betraying him so very deeply. Something that she had never felt before, not like this. Failed me? You said all went well, my dear. I don't understand what you mean. You said Baron West was informed. He he was, father, but it was Aldris. The Aldris? Why, what have they done? I fear it's what I have done. I... He may have gotten the best of me, and I didn't even realize it. Not until it was far too late. Who? Her father's tone grew larger. He was just about standing at his desk looking down on her. Cardia found his name so very painful to let out, but she had to. She needed to. This was the price to pay. She knew it. Ulthus. Her father was searching in his mind for the name to place upon a face. It took him a few moments, but then Cardia saw it all fit right into place in his head. They tempt you as child of a man? Lathan's son? She knew what her father meant. She nodded her head yes without looking at him. What did he do? He could be very demanding through those poignant words. Bam. And that's where we stopped. And I had a couple ideas. I was like, well, this would be like the introduction, so this wouldn't ruin anything. This, this is kind of like something that I wanted to explore. So my thinking was, I was like, okay. She's met before her father, you know, she doesn't want to fail him. 
but she thinks in her mind, I have an idea of how we can make this work, and but it's going to sully my name. And it's very obviously she's going to claim a rape on Ulfus. And from that point, I was going to see where I could go with this story in this weird political sphere. And this all takes place in a drawn a high society. So when I wrote this, uh, for instance, I called them monarchs, but now I call them the Aeven. The Aeven Society. I made a video about it on my channel. Just look it up if you want to know more about them. But it was this whole thing. And I, I was, I don't know, this just kind of happened. I wanted to see how far I could go with it. But that... That is the first story in the Unfinished Tales. When we continue, we should go down another road and discover maybe another short story. I have a, I have a, actually some pretty cool ones in there, but they, they all seem to end right before it gets interesting. Because <laughs> I didn't know what to do, but I was just like, and nah. We'll see what you think about that. Let me know. Um, maybe... That could be the story to pick up from. Or maybe it's the countless other ones. There's a lot of them. But we shall see in the next videos coming.